ध्यानमूलम गुरुर्मूर्ति पूजा मूलम गुरुर्पदम मंत्रमूलम गुरुर्वाक्यम मोक्ष मूलम गुरुर्कृपा श्री शंभो रामनाथ आदेश अलग आदेश Recently I went to buy a sofa and the furniture salesman told me the sofa that I had selected can sit 5 people without problem <laughs> I was wondering where I'll find 5 five, 5 five people without problems everywhere I see everyone I meet every one of you here on earth seems to be always all the time in deep problems i hope i am able to uh my voice is coming straight to you if somebody could just type saying you can hear me i can only see a couple of people now on live uh can you just type so that i can know that uh, you are able to see me and hear me well can somebody type i don't even know if the messages are going to come here just say adesh or something like that can somebody type adesh adesh that you can hear me uh i am not able to see i ah yes okay so ask yourself just as we were asking ourselves where am i where am i that is a deeper question than who am i you know the great maharishi ramana used this technique of awakening people by asking them to meditate on who am i i am asking you to ask yourself where am i can you all type this question where am i you will see how deep this rabbit hole goes because the moment you say where am i you will be forced to ask the question am i in my body am i in my mind i am am i on earth am i in between spaces between spaces where exactly am i don't try to answer it because i'm going to tell you a story which might help you resolve this question this story is of consciousness This story is what we call as the Gnana Mimamsa, the epistemology, the story of the Vedic rishis, the story of the nature of being, the ontological tattva Gnana. This story is of values, axiology, of purusharthas, of the natha tradition of kriya you need to know these three things knowing as a vedic rishi being as the tattva through our kriyas being is produced and three you must understand the purusharthas of what we are doing or what we are going to be doing that is the natha sampradaya the natha rishi sampradaya i have received a direct transmission from the master or the masters of human training from shambhala if you like it like to call it so siddhashrama gyan ganj give it whatever name i want to know what you know this 
university, this multiversity that has been directing human conscious leaders from much before we know history, from much before we can remember. What do you know this school as? Do you know it as Shambhala? Do you know it as Siddhashram? Do you know it as Gnanaganj? Or any other name? Just let me know. Just type here so I can also understand and go forward. Uh, I'm unable to read it. Can somebody read here? Shambhala. Who is saying that? Ah, okay. Shambhala. Shambhala. Let me tell you that Shambhala literally means Shambhu Alaya. I must also come clean to you and tell you that in my own training to reach here, where I am at this point of time, I have had to shed many layers of myself, remove so many unwanted karmic malas, and come out as a snake sheds its skin. It's not easy sitting here telling you that we are undergoing a great change, a great churning in the history of time itself. I'm not talking about the history of humanity or Earth or the Milky Way or this universe, but the history of time itself. So like I said, this session or this discourse is about time, space and consciousness, about the story of how consciousness has come to where it is right now. Before we go forward, you must also understand when we talk about the Natha Rishikula or the Rishikula, and we are bringing together the wisdom of the Natha tradition and we are bringing together the wisdom of the Vedic Rishis. We must understand both require us to understand or keep in mind three elements. There is a Rishi, the seer, there is a Chandas, the seen, and there is a Devata. The act of seeing itself. Let me repeat this to you again. There are three elements. The Rishi, the Seer, the Chandas, the Seen and the Devata, the act of seeing. And you must also understand that at various times, one of these three elements are in the foreground, the other one is in the background. Sometimes the seer is in the foreground, the seen and the seeing goes to the background. Sometimes the seen or most of the times as you are without any sadhana, without any meditation, without having undergone tapasya, you would only be aware of what is seen, the chandas. Especially here, the bottom of human consciousness. I know some of you, uh, some of my advanced shishyas might also mm -hmm. have joined. I am unable to see <laughs> exactly who is coming. Uh, there are seven people reminding me of the Sapta Rishis. So let me go into what the Saptarishis mean to us. The, if you look at the, uh, if you make a mental map of the Saptarishis, you will see that there is a silent Dakshina Murti sitting and transmitting to seven Shishyas. Now, this is a very important visualization. I hope all of you can see in your mind's eye. A Dakshina Murti sitting around with seven Shishyas. If you can, just say yes or just type seven, the number seven, so I know that you are paying attention to me. 
not just now whenever yes i can see some of you are saying yes and seven now if you get one layer inside of this story you will understand that the consciousness itself from human up has been divided into seven layers let me say that again if you go a little deeper you will see you will realize that the human consciousness upwards has been divided into seven layers each rishi representing one layer of consciousness is this clear is this clear is it about the seven uh, dimensions oh uh, we will talk about different dimensions uh, in in further sessions in further, further guru rupaya uh, sessions but right now i want you to understand and hold in your mind's eye the dakshina murti with seven rishis sitting can you can you do that can you do that here people who are sitting here okay fantastic now each of these levels of consciousness are given different names as different perceivers who is seeing it's the consciousness itself seeing the reality the world we are around it. okay so if you look at the names that have been uh, given in uh, the natha rishi tradition the jagrata avastha the so called jagrata avastha that you think that you are in right now the waking state is called sakala pramatre or the the perception of sakala see what happens here whatever you look at you become that you have no awareness of who is looking if you are let's say looking at this glasses then the glasses is the object and you become that object because you are not aware of who is looking at the glasses of course you are looking at the glass but you are not aware that you are looking at the glass isn't it for you to wake up to this reality and to see oh it is me who is looking at the object of course uh, the object could be external or internal when you wake up to the seeing itself that is the first step the first drashtara the first rishi wakes up i hope this is easy and clear to understand uh this i have because because the camera is just shifted this way i find it difficult to read what's coming in here uh if somebody here could read and tell me what the question was about i will uh, sir it's not a question it's uh, just your points being very iterated again oh okay okay this rishi represents a layer of consciousness first layer of consciousness sakala oh fantastic so what happens here the in the sakala or the sakala pramatra he needs to be grounded first because everything that he is seeing or hearing or feeling or touching all this senses smelling he or she is becoming that you understand whatever you taste ah so sweet so oh, so khara you are becoming whatever that is being experienced the rishi is asleep you need to wake that rishi up so what do you do i will give you a mantra at the end of this session stick around till the end this mantra will ground you to this reality of course the mantra itself could do magic to a lot of people 
But there is another one tiny kriya that can be followed up. So what we do these days, because a lot of people come here uh, who just want to know intellectually, uh, they think that, you know, some miracle will happen without them participating in the miracle. If there is anybody here who feels that the miracle will happen without their participation, please leave right now. You and I are not on the same plane. We are not on the same dimension. I am not the guru for you if you think that a miracle, the miracle will happen but not without your participation in it. Okay? If you want to see the miracle, the change, the transformation in your own life, then you stick around till the end because before, without understanding the entire blueprint of where you are going, you should know what you are getting into. There are no temporary solutions being given here by the Rishikula. There are no, you know, one size fit all thumb rule that is being given here. You have to participate. You have to become the Rishi. You have to participate in your own development. So at the end of it, I'll be giving a mantra which will help you ground yourself into this Sakala consciousness. Is that all right? Yeah. There is a second part to it. Once you are done with your 21 day internal sadhana, of course, all sadhanas are internal. You come back uh, and we will give you an Anugraha Diksha, which comprises of what we call as a Samaya Kriya where you get, like I said, further grounded into the, we call it the Prithvi Pada. Then there is a Bhuta Shuddhi. And then we give the Mahakriya, which corresponds to the Agni Pada. I'll tell you what happens here. See, your body is made up of five elements. Everybody knows that, right? The grossest element that you are made up of. Remember, you are also going up to the consciousness of Shiva. So, a lot of people find it difficult to accept that they are Shiva. You know, but we will get around it at a later date. However, so, you have to get grounded into the Prithvi Tattva. Okay, we will we'll do it with the uh, Samaya Kriya then there is an intermediary Sanjeevani Kriya which does the Bhuta Shuddhi okay? and then we get into the Agni Pada now um, <coughs> when we say Prithvi Tattva please don't think that you have to get stoned or something <laughs> I am reminded of a story may I, may I share a story with you guys I'm reminded of a story where two totally high <laughs> stoned so-called yogis, I'm sure they are from, uh, you know, lower Himalayan region. They were walking on a train track and one yogi says to the other, I will paraphrase in English, I don't want to use too many Hindi words today or Sanskrit words. Hey, this ladder looks rather long. They are walking on a train track, mind you. And the other one says, ah, I am okay with the long ladder, but why did they put the railing so slow? I have a problem reaching the railing. <laughs> not that kind of grounding, not getting stoned. Getting grounded in the sense, establishing yourself in the Prithvi Tattva. That is why we Sanatanis always go to a temple and remind ourselves that my prana can be transferred onto that murti, onto that idol which is made up of stone, metal, etc into a solid object. My prana 
can be transferred on to a solid object i can ground myself there and i can also take back that prana isn't it a fantastic science yeah that kind of grounding where you understand that my grossest level is the prithvi tattva that's why i said seven levels above or beyond the human consciousness of course there are lower consciousness we are not going to go into that because it's this is a very introductory session uh so after this we do the agni pada agsi what happens is you should have ideally if anybody who is doing it here will ask shouldn't we do the apas pada the water you know leg of the kriya before we go into the water part of it we need to ignite the agni pada the the fire element because as you are without initiation in your mindless existence the water body that you possess which is about 70% of your own being in fact it is 70% of earth itself at least on the surface level is frozen because of your emotional blockages okay when we talk about emotions we say we are flooded with emotions okay isn't it we never say that you know we are fired up with emotion we are say we are flooded with emotions before you get flooded with emotions you must remember that right now you are frozen and to defreeze your emotional blockages to bring the water back to acquire a water body which contains all the memories that you have accumulated through you know 85 lakh 8.5 million lifetimes you need to heat yourself up if uh, chaitanya bharati ji is here online i don't know if he is there oh yes i can see him he is already he has crossed the agni pada of mahakriya he has also crossed the bhuta shuddhi he has to come into the next stage which is acquiring the water body your body becomes as flexible as water how else will you awaken the kundalini how else will you make her move up like a snake if you are going to be rigid your body needs to be very flexible the chinese have taken this technology and they have created you know kung fu and 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 chi based chi gong chi gong and chi based traditions all over i will come to that uh chi gong actually works with air with the vayu pada of the kriyas i'll come to that see every time you undergo any of these kriyas and start seeing you must also remember that you are it there is nothing except consciousness consciousness is the being consciousness is also the doing and consciousness is also the witness so once you have mastery over the prithvi tatva you start control over materialistic things you have stability and grounding so all those people who want to win in the worldly race who have high ambitions of achieving something <laughs> they get it through just these two simple kriyas one is just chanting the mantra that i'm going to give to you at the end of it namaste i think someone new has come in yeah the second one is the anugraha diksha anugraha diksha is a very it's even though the word diksha might make you think that it is some ritualistic thing actually it is not diksha just means giving you a discipline in fact the word discipline comes from the word diksha 
so it is about disciplining yourself because it is you who will achieve it the dikshit is guaranteed to become that particular rishi that particular yoga will come to him that is why we say good fortune yanta yoga what yoga he has been born into isn't it yeah if you are still around if you are not sleepy just type alak adesh a a alak adesh a a just the two letters a a <laughs> people here also so the waking up of the water body also entitles you or ensures that you wake up in the swapna avastha we all know what swapna is isn't it swapna the dream state where you are real everything that is happening is real but there is no matter it's made up of just mental stuff isn't it just think about imagine what a dream is a dream is real but it is not material it is immaterial isn't it we want you to wake up in your dream not what you are doing right now dreaming when you are in the awakened state no 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 don't be what you are right now which is dreaming in awake state which is important sometimes to achieve worldly goals but we want you to wake up in your dreams this is in trika in the natha tradition is called pralaya kala where everything is shaky pralaya you remember that water body let me correlate this to the story of consciousness which i promised i will if you remember the dashavatara of mahavishnu you will see his first avatara of a fish something to do with pralaya isn't it from the fish the turtle the tortoise from the tortoise the wild boar from the wild boar half animal half human narasimha matsya kurma varaha narasimha see this is likened to the same story which we find in all the pralaya stories where the fish grows from a kamandala to goes into a lake from the lake kamandala is the water picture in which the water is held by the rishis from there it goes into the uh lake from the lake it goes into a bigger lake from the bigger lake it goes into the sea just like your consciousness needs to expand but remember that here in this case we are all in the ocean of consciousness in the ocean of consciousness is the sea of consciousness in which the lake of consciousness in which is a pond of consciousness in which is the kamandalu of the consciousness the fish is actually just going beyond a certain boundary while the water remains the same is that clear if it is clear just type c yes sir yeah yes people who are online just type c so i know it is clear just type c oh fantastic now if you look at where the human avataras of vishnu start vishnu is also called narayana from vamana onwards the ayana the journey of nara the secrets are there in the open you just need you just need to open your eye from vamana the dwarf who is stepping on three 
Earth's three rock, three planets, earthing himself, the Prithvi Tattva that I was talking about. He becomes the Parashurama playing with blood, the liquid Tattva. Any story associated with Parashurama, you will find is about him cleaning his axe. There's a water body. There is uh, some purification. These kind of stories. He's purifying the Jada Tattva. From there comes Rama, Sri Rama, my Ishtadeva. From the solar dynasty, the fire Tattva. Of course, I am asking you to first go through the fire Tattva, then go into the liquid Tattva. Because the frozen waters, the Nadis, need to be fired first. It is the Nadi which carries everything. The 72,000 Nadis that we talk of, the Chakras, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, depends on which tradition we have 10 Chakras, all carrying the intricate liquid before clearing itself up for prana. Right? So, you have to wake up at the Swapna level of consciousness. This kind of a Rishi is called the Shrauta Rishi in the Vedic system. Is called an Avagad in the Natha Yogi Sampradaya. Here we give him a Dasa name. Because he has to choose a Nishta and take that route. I myself was called Sri Ramadasa for the longest period of time. Now what happens once you wake up in your dream? Oh, no, no, no. Before that, you have to do the Samaya Kriya. Once you have done that, you get mastery over your emotional and fluidic aspects. And you are healed. You are healed of all the negativity of this life at least. Isn't that? That healing itself and the physical strength that you acquire itself a good reason to get this Diksha. But this is not where you stop. Just because you are getting some Siddhis. These are Siddhis actually. Mastery is Siddhi. Just because you have become emotionally a master of your emotion and master of your health, you need not stop there. Isn't it? Yes. So we move into the next Pada where you have to wake up in the Sushupti. How many of you have heard of the word Sushupti? Just type the word Rama because he is my Ishtadeva. Or type your Ishtadeva's name so I know you are here. There are more people who had come and many of them have left. That's okay. Whoever is here, type your Ishtadeva name or just type Rama or Ram or so that I know you are here. Let me tell you what I am disclosing to you right now is kind of a secret that has been kept out in the open. We, the Bharatiya Samskriti, the Indian, the Bharatiya tradition has kept everything alive. We have institutionalized these complex yet easy mechanisms of unfolding the consciousness. The Shiva's consciousness, the Paratattva can be unfolded. We have kept all this in open institutionalized dharma. Okay? So how many of you want to wake up in Sushupti? But for that you have to first wake up in Sapnavastha. So the person or the sadhaka or because we have already given the Upanayanam Diksha which is called the sub eye. The Upanayanam Diksha with the third eye is just about opening and given the Dasanama, he has awakened himself in the dream state. He goes into 
starts working at the sushupti state who can wake up at this dream state only a higher consciousness can wake up in the dream state and that higher consciousness is already in sushupti correct yeah so here we call this state in the natha tradition as the vijnana kala in patanjali yoga sutra he talks about the five bodies annamaya kosha manomaya kosha pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha gnana vijnanamaya kosha Some, sometimes it is gnanamaya sometimes it is vijnanamaya and anandamaya kosha it is this vijnanamaya kosha that exists in the sushupti and remember as you are going higher and higher in the consciousness you are also getting connected to all those beings all those perceptors all those gurus all those sadhakas all those yogis all those rishis who have created a space in that world around the sushupti state you can feel the connection with the other rishis the other adepts oh it's a jo- you you just know it is happening i think vivek has joined here uh he already feels a deep level connection with so many of these adepts these rishis these yogis he might not know it in a structured way yes if you are here uh, vivek uh just right masani amma ki jai because uh, that's very close to where you are that's the first name i got or anything you can just acknowledge that you're here uh so once you wake up or when you're about to wake up we make you go through a yogi diksha okay where you are given the swapna kriya where you work with the vayu pad of the kriya and what what uh, we call as the nidra shuddhi you need to clear away blockages all this dushwapna nashana you've heard of these things right when when we chant so many mantras from uh the samhitas samhita by the way itself means the union of the three rishi chanda and devata that itself is the meaning of samhita okay the union of the three so in uh, uh during the yogi diksha yogi diksha we give you the swapna kriya where you work on the vayu pada the nidra shuddhi or the duswapna nashana shuddhi and the vana sadhana here you have to spend some time in nature right all rishis the rishikulas have always been in jungles in forests in vana in the aranya have you ever wondered why this deep connection with nature waking up to the fact that nature is alive and i am a part of it your heart must expand it will expand in the kriya to everything around you it's not they're not things it's 20 hours everything is alive all right and you are a being just like the other beings i told you this is i'm going to talk about the journey of knowing being and ethics purusharthas so you have to go through a vana sadhana what happens here you acquire mastery over movement thought control and breath control haven't we heard of this siddhi oh people say i went to that guru ji before i could say anything he told me you have come here for this reason your name is this you have come from this place this is that siddhi this is that mastery you shouldn't stop here you should not stop till the final goal is achieved okay there are we have just reached from the bottom the jagrata avastha the swapna avastha the sushupti avastha we still have according to 
the Natarishi tradition, the Turiya Avastha, the Turiya Tita Avastha, the Sadashiva Avastha, the Shiva Avastha, and the Moksha Avastha. I would uh, like to pause here today and uh, give you the mantra. Before that, if you have any questions till this place, we have spoken about Jagrata Avastha and what is the Diksha that you need to do and what are the Kriyas that will be given to you. I have spoken about the Sapna Avastha what is the diksha that will be given to you and what are the kriyas you need to do and what are the masteries, what are the siddhis you will get. Then we have also spoken about the Kanda Rishi, which who awakes, who awakens in the Sushupti Avastha. The fire, uh, did we speak about the fire element? We did speak about the fire element where Mahakriya, what uh, you know Chaitanya Bharati ji has been doing, he has been awakening his fire pada his Agnipada, which will melt the blockages in all the 72 Nadis. By now, it has happened. He has also finished the Bhuta Shuddhi. He has purified all the five Bhutas, the elements. Now he is ready to acquire the water body. Right? Uh, there is some question which has come. Somebody can, can you read what the question is? Acha, you put that. If there are any questions, uh, go ahead. Then I've also told you who a Rishi is. A Rishi is, no, we haven't gone till Rishi, we've come till Kanda Rishi, Sushupti, Yogi Diksha, Supna Kriya, and we have spoken about the uh, Nidra Shuddhi and the Vana Sadhana. And what happens at this stage? Once you become a Yogi, you get mastery over thought, you get mastery over movement, and also breath control at this stage you will start understanding that the breath is constant it is now it is always in the present it is both inside and outside it is a continuous process that you are not doing remember it is happening on its own and then it is connected to the mind so you can manipulate the mind or you can observe the mind depending on what you're going to do with the breath and then you will understand that breath is the devata. It is the power which will take you from the lower kundalini to the chit kundalini to the prana kundalini. Okay, I'm going to stop here because it might get too overwhelming. And uh, just about four or five minutes of question answer session and then I'll give you the mantra which will link you to this sampradaya, to this tradition. I must also tell you what the tradition is. Right? What is a tradition? See, we have been told about the yugas and the pralayas that happen in intermediary uh, spaces between these times, uh, eras, the yugas. Also, there is a pralaya between two manvantaras. There is a pralaya between two kalpas. And then there is a pralaya between, you know, the uh, the Brahmas themselves. Okay. When the pralaya happens, you must understand we work with two idioms. One is yatha brahmande tatha pindande yatha pindande tatha brahmande. What is inside is outside. What is outside is inside. It's actually a fractal system. So if you master your own pralaya kala. Then you will master all the pralayas that will happen in the larger time cycles, in the larger Kala Chakras. So what survives these pralaya kalas, what survives is the tradition, is the sampradaya. That is the sanatana. I am giving you an open invitation to join our grand sanatana tradition of Natarishis which we are reviving after 1000 years. It had gone underground some, somewhere around the Himalayas, especially in Kashmir and nearby areas in Afghanistan, Upaganistan. And we are reviving it back again now with a simple mantra. The moment you start chanting the mantra, you know you are connected to the heart of this universe. Because it combines the Vedic wisdom, it combines the Tantric wisdom and gives us an intermediary Kriya. 
beautifully woven it is the most accommodating it is the most plural it is beyond jati it is beyond religion it is beyond male female rishi rishika it is the most pluralistic of all traditions that sanatana has produced till now right are there any questions of one of you here if there are questions you just tell me or otherwise i will get into the mantra part how do you chant the mantra you chant the mantra internally 21 times for one week 7 days you chant the mantra internally for 54 times 54 times for the next 7 days the second week you chant it 54 times and then you chant the mantra internally for 108 times in the third week and if you feel connected you are all connected to the sampradaya to this parampara that is why you are here till this point sharada mata promised me adi shakti natha my own guru has promised me that there are there are innumerable natha rishis in swapna sushupti and jagrata avastha who will wake up and join this jnana ganga that is going to start flowing through us through all of us and the starting point you must remember the mighty ganga starts as a small trickle from gomuk at least on earth all rivers start from a small trickle here it is not that ganga is meeting the ocean here the ocean itself is meeting the ganga in the natharshi tradition no questions i must be a very good guru <laughs> or i might be a idiot who nobody can understand no no the session help your question will help others also understand if they have some doubts if they don't want to come out in the open it will help them that's the reason why because you might have a doubt that somebody else might also have yeah no doubts oh fantastic okay mantra i will give you tell me how many of you even the advanced yogis here uh including chaitanya bharati ji this mantra i have been asked to make it public this is the first time that this mantra is coming out after a thousand years uh there are three or four ground rules please till we ask you to do not give it uh, to others okay start from today third third week from now if you are still finding yourself able to chant the mantra and you find the connection which like i said we already have that is why you have stayed back till uh 50 minutes right you come back to me and we will take you through the rest of the journey and that is somebody is asking do i have to change my lifestyle before chanting the mantra not right now but obviously as you grow higher in your consciousness your lifestyle will change automatically you don't need to change anything the higher conscious planes the rishis the gurus they will change your lifestyle for the better they will, they are preparing you for the next big turning the the next big rotation that is happening do you know that we are poised to change the dhruvatara we have to change the north do you know we are poised for a new revolution where artificial intelligence might become our slave or we might become slaves to it there's a new change in consciousness that is happening more about it later the next session next thursday 
So the Guru Upaya, this is also a Diksha, but it's an open Diksha. My request to you, the advanced yogis here, please do not give it to anybody else right now. Finish to three months. It's, it's not going to take you more than 10 minutes to finish it. It's a very small mantra. And then you come back to me or uh, get in touch with Nirveda Nandanatha, who happens to be the favorite of everybody. So either to me or to him, after three weeks, you just send a message or call and say, I have completed it. And we'll take it for, further from there. Okay? No change is required. Uh, all I need is a strong sankalpa from you. Can we all do a sankalpa here? Just say, type yes. yes. The letter S. Just type the letter yes. So I know that you are ready to take the sankalpa. Fantastic. Wonderful. Okay. After three weeks, I will welcome you formally into the great Natarishi tradition. You don't have to take it further if you don't want to. But if you feel the connection, if you feel that you are destined to be a leader in your own field. Don't give the mantra because you might not be connected yet. So you are, you are when you are giving the energy, it is going to be dead. It there's just going to be words. Okay. When I am transmitting this to you, it's a transmission from the rishis. Please do not think that this mantra belongs to me or to you or anybody. The mantra is just the sounds connecting us to Shiva. Okay? This three weeks is for you to understand if you feel the connection. Before you feel the connection, please do not go around giving this mantra to someone else. Okay? I, I am trickling it down to about 220 volts, not even 220 volts, to 5 volts that you can handle. But it's a big live electric network back there. So it is being just like Shiva holds Ganga in his Jata and you know regulates what is required. Right now this mantra is just a small regulated stream reaching you. You consume it, you drink it, you become Pavitra. You you feel yes, this Jnana Ganga is more satisfying, more fulfilling than some RO water that you are drinking till now. <laughs> okay? So, I am not saying you, you will never be allowed to give it. Right now, your focus should be on these 21 days. You now, just as they say in, in an aeroplane, mm -hmm. in case of an emergency, wear the oxygen mask on your face. Wear the oxygen masks on your face. First, you get your oxygen before helping others. Okay? Yes? Can everybody say yes again? Because yes. I think I took a very long detour. I'll come back to the Sankarpa. Yes. Yes. Type, type. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. People should also yes. type yes. there. Fantastic. Okay. So, here is the mantra. Just be open if you want to spread your arms and receive this mantra. Just receive it. I'll say it twice. You can repeat it at your home. Also, invite somebody who's there, who's uh, around if they want to take it directly from me and maybe because of you they might also be connected to it because we are all after all crisscrossing in the karmic tapestry of you know connection and being okay okay just receive it with both your hands with an open mind with an open heart the mantra is a few moments later. Where do we chant this? When do we chant this? The ideal thing would be to chant it as soon as you wake up. The first, you don't need to brush, you don't need to wash your face. The first thing you do is chant this mantra. And the last thing that you do, if you can, 
is chant this mantra 21 times in one go first week 54 times in one go second week and 108 times in the third week and then call me or nirveda nandanata okay so you can do it as soon as you wake up early in the morning or you can do it just the last thing that you do both options are available to you and i wish you all the blessings from all the gurus who have existed who will existing and who will exist exist and a great blessing from Sri Adi Shakti Natha, who you have just awoken, who you have made Chaitanya in your own being. And you will see the magic, you will see the miracle happen. May you receive all the Siddhis, all the masteries that come. And with a small prayer, we will end this session. Thank you for listening to all this in such a loving way. And please be blessed all throughout this week and we'll meet again 7 o'clock next Thursday. After prayer, I will be ending this session. Om Adesh Agore Bhyo Agore Bhyo Gora Gora Tare Pyaha Sarve Bhyaha Sarva Sarve Bhyo Namaste Sturudha Rupe Bhyaha Send happy thoughts to everybody around you. Recall your mother, father, Ishtadaiva, Guru. Bless the entire world. Adesh, Alak, Adesh, Alak.